Welcome back to WRPL, a podcast where we talk about all the things we are watching, reading, playing, and listening to. My name's Ben. And I'm Steve. How you doing, Steve? I'm good, Benjamin. How are you? I'm okay. This is not a very eventful week for either of us, really. Uh, in terms of maybe what we've watched, read, played, or listened to. Yes. I had a nice day the other day, because oh. I got the suit for my wedding day. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, I got a... I haven't gotten it yet, but, like, it's the first custom suit I've ever gotten. Mm, so I got nice. to, like, pick the fabric and, like, the lining inside and, like, down to the buttons and everything. Like, it was a really cool experience. Yeah? And, yeah. Is it just black? No. Oh. Yeah. It's you a, doing a Paul Rudd blue jacket from My Love You Man? Uh, I don't think it's that... I think that one's a little bit lighter than the color I chose. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it's a navy blue uh, suit. Um, it's got, like, the kind of, like, purple ish lining mm. in it um with like gold trim because we're doing like kind of purple and gold colors mm. for the wedding or blue i don't you know what <laughs> did she help uh not really no. uh, i mean she trusted you huh well i initially wanted kind of a purple suit not and everyone like made fun of me because I was just like, "You're gonna look like the Joker." I was like, "No, I have a clear vision. It's not gonna mm-hmm. look like the Joker." And like, I even like had a picture that I found online. It's like it looks something like this. Mm-hmm. And it looked incredible. Yeah, as and, long as you don't have like the tails and then an orange and green yeah, shirt. Yeah, it wasn't like it was like it. bright purple. It was like yeah. a darker purple, and it was you know it was well put together. Um, and come with pocket square. Like it was it was gonna work. And but everyone just like didn't see it that way. And so if my wife doesn't see it that way, then. I'm going to get what she wants, <laughs> so, uh, but I need a new suit anyway, um, and yeah, it, I think it's going to look real nice, you know, it's interesting to have something tailored to your body versus, mm-hmm. you know, just baggy clothes. Yeah, um, well, I also picked up my suit for your wedding, I'm going oh. with the Two-Face suit from uh, Batman <laughs> Forever, it's going to be classic one side and then just horrible animal print on the other. I would love that more than anything, <laughs> to be honest. I, I saw my sisters today, and they were asking me about, um, they were like, oh, sh- does your fiancé want us to, like, wear a particular color or avoid a particular color or whatever, because we need to pick out our dresses? And I was just like, oh, I don't know, you'll have to ask her. But when I was at the suit place, um, she had some suits that people were waiting to pick up, and one was a bright orange suit that looked like the Dumb and Dumber nice. suit. Nice. And I was just, uh, which apparently, none of this matters. The guy got because he was like friends with Matthew McConaughey, and Matthew McConaughey wears like an orange suit to all these like Texas football games. Okay. So he got that suit specifically to mess with Matthew McConaughey. Is the story that the uh, tailor? Told okay. Me. Um. Anyway, who locally knows Matthew McConaughey? I don't know. No one around here knows Matthew McConaughey. But uh, that guy's just preparing <laughs> for his Dumb and Dumber costume next Halloween. Yeah. Uh, so I, I said to my sister, was like, oh, well, well, I saw that suit. I think it'd be funny if you guys wore, like, the Dumb and Dumber suits instead of dresses. And they're like, oh, we'll do it. I was like, I dare you to. I think that'd be hilarious if all three of my sisters came as, like, movie characters in oh, suits. Oh, yeah, do, like, two people have the Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber suits. I think the priest should be wearing the mask yellow uh, zoot suit. <laughs> Uh, what are some it's other... The Jim Carrey wedding. Yeah, just the Jim Carrey wedding. Uh, two sisters wear the Dumb and Dumber, and then one sister wears the Ace Ventura Bent Detective. Yes! <laughs> and slicks up the hair. <laughs> Real classy shit. And, anyway. Anywho, so, kind of a kind of a light episode this time. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Sometimes we think uh, we don't have much to say, but it all comes spilling out. So here's my thoughts on the immigration policy. <laughs> and Yikes! <laughs> uh, so as always, spoilers for anything that is, was, will be. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Yeah. I don't have much to talk about. Do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Uh, I, I saw a couple of movies. That's uh, about it. Well, let's just knock out some stuff that... We were watching, or that came back, yeah. and... Rapid fire, just, you know, uh, week-to-week shit. Yeah, that we won't do deep dives in. Yeah. Uh, Wheel of Time, really like this episode. Awesome. I, I thought it was the best episode so far. But by the end of this episode, I was like, yep, I'm into this show. Yeah, I like. I really liked the last episode, because they had sort of that battle sequence, and like I always worry, like, seeing battle sequences in fantasy stuff, because, you know... You're, are you going to, especially something where it's like new and you're not quite sure what the budget is, like mm-hmm. obviously they put money into the show, but I think 
the battle sequence looked better than I expected because um, I, I thought the magic worked and I liked that it. it was like kind of explosion and stuff, mm-hmm. and it, but it didn't look ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really liked the last episode, but this episode I really dug and just like the final scene with like the um after the dude had like killed himself and the i don't and they're all doing like the oh yeah yeah, sort yeah. Of ritual like share our pain thing mm-hmm. which i don't know if they were like symbolically sharing the pain or if like that guy was just like just grieving and i know she shares his thing mm-hmm. but i don't know i just really like the episode a lot and I, I if it continues on like this i i look forward to continue watching the show yeah i think this it does a really good job of explaining the world uh, without it being too exposition-y. Mm-hmm. You know, I, like, I feel like I understand what's going on, where when I first started watching Game of Thrones, I felt like I was always asking questions. Right. And this, I really don't. Like, I, I get it. it. And I know it's a bigger world, but I get it enough that I don't have to be, like, having to watch the previous lo- on yeah. uh, to, to understand what's going on. It's like they're going to new places, and other than the one place and uh where they had like the shadow that like followed them Mm -hmm. where they like did a whole backstory to like this town kind of thing like they're just going places they're not explaining where like anything is which Mm -hmm. like to some people could be like well where the fuck are we but at the same time it's just i kind of like that it's just like all you need to know is who these characters are Mm -hmm. and like you know what their personalities Mm -hmm. are um because as of right now there's no like grand overarching mission it's just like mm. oh we're just gonna head to this place and then figure it out from there yeah. like, there's no and then it's just like obviously characters have splintered off and they're doing sort of their own things and you know you're seeing magic stuff or like all right well what does this mean and mm. you know all that kind of stuff you know especially with like pairing the wolves like is this a secret werewolf or like yeah. what's, what's going on here yeah. um but yeah i'm, I'm interested and in, well, we'll we'll see how it goes yeah i i um after the first few episodes it seemed like the story was going to be, we got to get to the White Palace. What is it called? The Tower? I, I believe it's just the White Tower. The White Tower. Uh, and I really thought once they split up, it was going to be, that's the end of the season. They finally arrived. Yeah, and now the story. like four different yes. adventures, but really it's, and it's it like, lasted nope. an episode. We're all here. They're, they're all all there and uh, ready to move on. And it's like, okay, cool. We're halfway through the season and we're way ahead of schedule than I expected it to be. I really thought it was going to drag out. So I'm very excited to see uh, what, what's going to happen. Yeah, cool. Uh, Always sunny? Oh, God. All right, what'd you think of these episodes? Uh, well, first off, I'm so happy that it's always sunny is back. It just seems like it comes and then it just is over so quick, and then it just feels like even though it maybe a year later, it feels like two. Yeah, because um, they definitely don't have a, a really tight schedule of when these have to come out. It's yeah. like, well, maybe we have one this year, maybe we don't. Because they didn't have one last year. Maybe that's why I say it feels like it's been two years. Well, yeah, I mean everything got shut down for yeah, yeah. COVID, so. Uh, but the first episode, I thought, was a really clever way to... Because uh, of, like, of course these people... Of course they would. When they kept saying, my guy, my guy, yeah. I knew they weren't talking Yeah, about but I, I could not figure out who they were yeah. talking about. And it's like, of course, it would be Kanye West yes. is who they were talking about. Um, and who else would be involved with, you know, Giuliani's hair and the podium stealer guy? And, and it's so funny because I think on other shows, like, that would just seem like a weird bit. It's like, why does that... But it's like because we've seen Frank do these weird schemes and mm. it's like it just makes perfect sense for Frank to be Giuliani's hair guy yep. and it's just they've set up this world where they should not be involved in anything important ever <laughs> but when they are you're like okay I believe that yep. they just have their own little fantasy world and it, it just works and it's a great part of the show um, and Charlie like freaking out at D in the first episode, like the pelts, D, the pelts, you bitch. <laughs> and just kept calling her a bitch. And it's just like, um, uh, I didn't really, I don't call her a bitch all the much. That's more of Dennis's thing, because she's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so real I, clever stuff in the first episode. I think some of the, I don't know, this episode had a really weird feel to it, and some of the shots even look kind of weird. It, it was, I think if there's one thing I think has changed and I don't really like it is how studio it is looking now um like i mean they've always been on a set but Mm -hmm. i feel like the cameras they used were grainier or Mm -hmm. i don't know it just had a lower budget feel which kind of made it feel more lived in where now it's just like when did this bar get so bright yeah you know Um, i i love 
how Mac is now. Like, you go back to older episodes, and Mac is, you know, kind of fake tough guy or whatever. Yeah. But now that he's gay, it just seems like all of his line delivery is just much better. Mm. I just love this version of Mac more than any other Macs we've had. Gay Mac, best Mac. Yeah, I, I think after... 12 years or whatever many season it was where it's just like his insecurity was what is what was funny but i i think that bit ran its course it's like how long are we really gonna do this like well yeah he's gay but we're just like kind of gonna gloss over it or like make fun of him for it but not really lean into it it's like and then they did the gay episode where he comes out and it's one of the best episodes of sunny like phenomenal (laughs) and just like such a weird thing to have like this beautifully choreographed (laughs) dance number and with like emotion and storytelling behind it and like that's your season finale yeah and then i thought you were talking about the episode he actually comes out with with the lottery ticket oh yeah that i think is one of the the best episodes well, that one too. Ever, i just mean ever like his, done. Uh, the official like yeah. coming out to his dad and sure. everything um but yeah like now that he's out like it's not like insecure i mean i guess he's still insecure about his body because he mm-hmm. got all ripped and stuff but yeah, I, I think he's because he's more himself. It's just kind of more enjoy, and he isn't as grating. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's still very much Mac. <laughs> uh, but episode two, uh, I think, was another great entry to the season, and I yeah. hope because like the more recent seasons always have like an episode or two where you're just like, I mean, it's still funny, but it's not great. Yeah. Like they kind of, I feel like they phoned this episode in, but like what a great way to tackle the like blackface mm-hmm. controversy going on now, and just kind of like double downing on it like yeah. i was almost hoping they'd still like do, do it, it. <laughs> yeah and uh, but they're smart enough to know like let's not do that mm-hmm. because we've established in plenty of episodes that they understand woke, woke culture they're just they just don't like yeah. doing it but they're like we know this is not what people want so we're gonna do what people want mm-hmm. um i'm saying in character not yeah. just as in the show but uh yeah watching them make this movie just it was it is the level of cringe I can tolerate. <laughs> like like the, the idea that they're at a like these people are at a birthday party and the daughter is just a doll. <laughs> it's such a weird thing. Yeah. Like they couldn't get a kid on set. Uh, and I like uh, what was the pimp's name? Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack. Yeah. yeah. And, and when they're like, can you give them a note to tone it down? And they all like chicken out to do anything. And they're like, oh wait, are, are my headphones working? Oh, I don't think mine are. And, and Max just kind of like, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, more Pepper Jack. That, that's what we need. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they keep bringing Donovan McNabb back. Well. The or Don Cheadle. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah the yeah. first time they met, he was Donovan McNabb. Yeah, uh, it's just like the weirdest cast of like secondary characters mm-hmm. on television. That it's nice that they can go back to that well and bring these people. And he's like, oh, that's kind of fun. And then he like they give him control, control. and then he turns it into this documentary about how, how shitty, shitty they are. They are. <laughs> yeah. And then they decide to make part eight. Yeah, which when at the end when he's just like. I'm going to play Murtaugh. I really thought they were all going to go like, yeah, like, like, oh, that's a great idea. But they were still kind of doing the like, no, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been a funny reversal of it all. I I was surprised that they gave D uh, Riggs from the (laughs) get-go. All of you hate, I mean, D is like the actor in Mm -hmm. the group. But every time we see her act, it's just, like, (laughs) horrendous. It's like, why do you guys, like, why would she be the one in this movie to be the big, I don't know. But yeah, it's all it's all good stuff. I oh, and then you know Dennis still like you know being forty plus and was like trying to have sex with nineteen year old chicks <laughs> and just kind of like yeah, what whatever, whatever he said, I, I don't care. Let, let's just bang and then <laughs> them totally seeing through his bullshit. But then seeing that evolution of like oh, I, I know what I have to do, and, <laughs> yeah. and he's just regurgitating back to them, and then they're all like oh wow, he's cute, and it's just perfect, disgusting Dennis. Mm-hmm. And I love that it's an ongoing bit of like cut when he it cuts to him having sex it's always just like his like face like coming into frame like and it's like this like he's straining from the ejaculation and i think it's funny that uh because it was always just like that shot but this mm-hmm. one added like the girl saying like daddy over it again it's just like yeah that you know millennial culture i think it's just like a funny little detail it's mm-hmm. like i'm glad you know they they thought of these things and of yeah. course like i imagine dennis would like eat that shit up <laughs> um but yeah so yeah. Qu- quality stuff quality yeah, stuff yeah good good shit glad glad it's back 
I'm interested uh, to see what other shenanigans they get into. Because you never quite know with this crew. I, I know... I haven't done any research. Next episode is D saying, like, you remember 1998? Oh, and it yeah, go yeah. flashes back for them. But that's, that's all I know. 15 years in, they're getting an origin episode. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see. What else? Oh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Hawkeye episode three, I think, is the best episode so far. Agreed. Uh, finally get some some good Arrow action. Yeah. I, yep. I, I love his crazy, wacky Arrow stuff. That was great. The big Arrow with the pin particles, that was great. That was cool, but my I, what I didn't like about it is... And it's not that I... I it was a cool like action scene, and it, it's cool that it's like, oh, here's another connective tissue to the MCU, because really we haven't gotten much with that. But it's just like, this dude just destroyed an entire bridge to stop yeah. a car. And a it just car. seemed kind yeah. of like over the top. It's like, sure. yes, it was cool, but like that should have been something you use to fight fucking Thanos. Like, that should have been. Yeah. And why not just like shoot the car, make it go real big, and then it would probably fall off the bridge anyways. Yeah. Why did you have to shoot a or, specific arrow? Yeah, I mean, or, you know, pim particles go either way. It's like, well, why didn't you just shrink it with them inside oh, yeah. or something, you yeah. know? Yeah. It was cool, but but I even, was like, even the chase leading up to that, it's like you can tell, yeah, this is shot on green screen because they can't be whipping around through streets in real life. But it looked really good. Yeah, I loved all of that. Oh yeah, the camera work in there, I mm-hmm. uh, was really really cool shot. I like that. Um, I like Echo. Um, mm-hmm. I guess the actress is deaf in real life, I, and I is imagine she was missing yeah. the leg as well. That's like a authentic. Here's something I found on the web, according oh, to LAtimes dot com, Phyllis Frelick. A deaf actress you said who Echo. received a Tony Award in 1980 for her performance in Children of a Lesser God has died at Echo. a temple city home. Stop. <laughs> that won't be annoying. Yeah. The, <laughs> so villain, the villain. The quiet villain. <laughs> uh, so it, it was it was neat that they actually got... Uh, and um, I didn't know this until earlier this year, but in Titans, they, Barbara Gordon is commissioner gordon Mm -hmm. and she's in a wheelchair and she's missing a leg and i thought they just went with a like she lost a leg but no that actress is an amputee Hmm. cool good for inclusion honestly you know what i like most about the show but i'm disappointed i'm not getting more of i like all the ronin stuff like i would have liked to have seen you know a a hawkeye in the ronin era just like rampage i mean i don't know how interesting that would be because it's not like I don't know if he really had an arc through that whole time, mm-hmm. but I don't know, just seeing all the flashbacks to him just being this assassin ninja it just mm-hmm. all seems really cool, and I like the idea of him being a murderous Batman kind of character sure. who just, like, strikes fear in the underworld, and then he's just, like, you find out he's an Avenger. <laughs> I think there's going to be a, a like, because we see the little flashback where her father gets killed by Ronan. But we don't ever see like a close up of Jeremy Renner's eyes or anything. I'm thinking that wasn't him uh-huh. in the suit. That it could be, you know, sword guy from Better Call Saul. Oh uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it could yeah, be yeah, him yeah. doing it. You know, it could be anybody. Uh, I, I have no no reason to really believe that. But it's just kind of like he didn't say anything. Right. Maybe who knows? Uh, I here's what I want. I don't think it's gonna happen. But I would have loved an entire episode. With no uh, audible dialogue, oh. I, I would I wanted Hawkeye's uh, earpiece to fall out, and then just be like two deaf people fighting each, and the mm-hmm. whole episode like you can see like Haley Steinfeld's character like talking to him, but, mm-hmm. you can't but it's hear just him. all yeah, it's all like yeah, um, but like just an entire episode where all it is is just action and telling the story without any of that. I think it could be like a really great episode of television. Mm-hmm. Um, be kind of like the but BoJack it, Underwater episode. Yeah, but I think that'd be a hard sell to yeah. a, you know, Disney mm-hmm. is going to be Disney about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that we only get six episodes of this show because I think like they could dedicate an episode to just Ronin doing Ronin things. But I mean, they might. You don't know how. It's, I mean, we only I got three it. left. Yeah. But uh, I'd say the biggest not reveal is her uncle it's probably kingpin oh yes yes oh, okay. it's like that's vincent d'onofrio's voice like when he like touches her cheek well, see, and I, says something, it sounds that just like that a, didn't click to me um when i first heard it i just assumed like well we never saw Haley steinfeld's dad die and i was oh. like maybe that's him like well, that'd be a fun little like twist because i think everyone okay. thought like maybe it'd be uh her mom's boyfriend mm-hmm. or, or something 
Um, and then I went online, not specifically looked that up. It's like it was a kingpin in uh, the MCU. And I was like, oh, okay. Like now, as soon cool. as they said uncle, and then this big black suit came in, I was like, that's kingpin. Has to be. And then he touches her cheek and goes like, ooh, ooga booga, or whatever. <laughs> I can't remember what he said, but it was just like, yep, that's Vincent D'Onofrio. There's no way that it's not Vincent D'Onofrio. And I'm so glad he's there because he's one of the best things about the Daredevil Netflix show. Mm-hmm. He's amazing as it. And I hope they bring, uh, what's his name? Bullseye as well. I liked Bullseye in season three. Yeah, all the, honestly, all the Daredevil stuff mm-hmm. from the Netflix yeah. shows was... Foggy and Karen, give me all of them. Yeah, I mean, I loved the first season of Jessica Jones probably more than Daredevil. Mm-hmm. And then I started season two and I just I couldn't get into it. Mm-hmm. But all of Daredevil is great. Yeah, yeah, all of Daredevil except except Electra. They can they could let her stay dead. That's fine. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, They'll do the multiverse thing and bring in a new one. Yeah, and bring in uh, Jennifer Garner Jennifer Gardner. Walks yeah. You think I missed this party? <laughs> and she's just like, oh, where's the seesaws? I wanna. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, it, it's nice seeing like that. Now that we're past the whole infinity war thanos thing and we do have what's his name new big bad uh kang yes we have kang the conqueror coming and and all these other things but it's nice to see like well we could have this little split off and you have the kingpin and he's doing big time crime city things and you could have your daredevil or your spider-man fighting him and work it in with Oscorp or something you know they're working together to do even bigger crimes whatever it is <laughs> uh, but it doesn't have to be like all the movies are gearing up towards one thing mm-hmm. so we could all get together it's like nope we did that now that it's established we can just kind of go anywhere not every single thing needs to be connected because we know it's in the same universe I'll just be really excited to see Kingpin doing some now would some you fun be shit. happy if he just stayed Vincent D'Onofrio size or would you like to see them do like now that we have official Disney Marvel big budget money it's like it's still him but they'll yeah. do like the opposite of the Steve Rogers stuff and just like blow him blow up, him up. where it's just like I don't I, know if you do like a mutation or you do camera ray or like is some of Hulk's blood gets in on something, <laughs> whatever and then he's just like this big I, big dude I wouldn't because like how are you gonna go up against Spider-Man sure I mean but they just do the thing like yeah the like Kingpin's big but he's just like a brick you know spider-man's gonna punch him in the gut and he's not gonna even move uh and he's you know vincent offer is bigger than tom holland so i think I, it will work i don't think like he could be imposing next to tiny tom holland or anything but at the same time i'm just because i mean he they, fought daredevil which is just a human dude who didn't sure, have super strength sure. and daredevil kicked his ass sure that's true so it's like you're gonna have to do something to make me believe that he can take a punch from the kid who like lifted a building off of himself hey dr octopus took a punch from peter parker and didn't break his face so yeah but <laughs> i think peter parker knew that like he was human so uh-huh, he was uh-huh. pulling punches oh, okay. which i guess tom uh-huh. could do. i don't know it doesn't matter. We'll get to it when we get yeah, to it. But I'm I'm very excited for that. I like whatever else happens. And I I thought uh, what's it? Black Widow's sister was going to show up in this show. And it's like, is she going to show up in the last few episodes? And we have another villain to to deal with, or is she going to show up in the last episode? And it'll be a teaser for the next season if there is ever another season. Yeah, I imagine she'll just show up at the end because you know he feels. I'll probably be at, like, Nat's grave or something and just, mm-hmm. like, hey, kid, I miss you or something. And then, <laughs> you know, uh... Yelena? Is that her y- name? Y- yeah, whatever her face. New Black Widow. She shows yeah. up and it's like, Lawrence oh. P. <laughs> Lawrence <laughs> P. P. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think if... That would be the show where they... they or this would be the time to, like, meet and bring her mm-hmm. in because it's, like, that would, it's your connective tissue to the main universe yeah. outside of Scarlett Johansson because there's a sort of a pre-connection there and then you can kill off hawkeye and then when kate bishop joins like young avengers and uh florence Pugh is on like the bad guy Mm -hmm. team then then we have like pre-existing rivalries so that'd be cool yeah uh yeah good love love the show yeah love it good 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 stuff Uh, is there anything else on tv uh I think if it was super important, we would remember. Yeah. So we, okay. we can always talk about it next time. Yeah, I guess. Uh, uh, I think that's it. 
for uh, I mean I have a movie that I want to talk about. Okay. And uh, I have uh, a game other than the game I told you. Oh, okay. About, okay. Okay. So. Well, I guess I'll go. Okay. I saw Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Ooh. Raccoon City. <laughs> I can highly recommend you not see this under any circumstance. Was this directed by this? The no. Same? Okay. No. I didn't think so. Him. I just. Oh, okay. Okay. He did forty-seven meters down and forty-seven meters down uncaged. I like both of those movies. Okay. Uh, but I'm a sucker for that sort of stuff. He also did the Strangers sequel, Strangers Pray at Night, which I didn't love, but I, I guess horror fans do. He did The Other Side of the Door, which was very boring. Oh, it's Storage 24 is what it's Got called. It. Okay. Yeah, a bunch of... 24, uh, the Jeff Gordon movie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, just a whole bunch of terrible looking uh, horror movies. So he, he doesn't have a huge resume. This movie wants to satisfy all the fans. Oh, you didn't get what you wanted with the previous Resident Evil movies. They were all so scattershot and they, they're not focused on any one game. We're going to give you the two most popular games smushed into one movie, which is its first problem. It wants to be Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. It wants to do the big city issues with Claire and Leon and then do the in the, in the house with Jill and Chris. So they smash them both together and it just does not work. It's not scary. It's not fun. The zombies look awful. They look like blo they look waxy and bloated mm -hmm. looking like they don't look like rotting zombies and I and I know probably they were thinking zombies have been done a million times. How do you do something different? And so many of them look like they are just kind of sick. Mm -hmm. Not really rotted. I know it's only like hours within the outbreak, so they wouldn't be these decomposing corpses, but they still just looked really, really bad. There's one crow, one dog, one liquor, and then like one big monster at the end, which they show in the trailer, and you can tell it looks really, really, really bad. Every now, is the main. I know you said this isn't connected to the other, other Resident Evil movies. Are the characters in this game playing characters? From the game, or is it like, here's just a no, these, story in this Resident no, Evil universe? No, these are the main characters from 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, you get, yeah, Jill, Wesker, Chris, Claire, and Leon. You, I think that there's like a helicopter pilot and then another like disposable guy just to be eaten. Sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I bet they have, they share names with, with in-game characters. So it does at least do that. And there are small little nods like oh look there's a typewriter in the con in the corner that's where you how you save your game in resident evil and there's a, a piano when you play i think it's like moon moonlight sonata or whatever to open up a secret passage and uh claire gets a, a ring of keys and they have like the heart the diamond the spade the the club just like in the game you had to get the heart key and then you know all these little things and there are little little nods that if you don't know what they are from they just kind of seem weird and out of place mm -hmm. and it's just one of those things like what is this thing is there a laser grid in this movie there's no laser grid Damn. i know that's pretty much the staple of all resident evil is laser grids but none of that it's and, and the worst problem is besides being not overly gory i mean it has a couple of things but nothing's interesting it's so boring it is a dull drag of a movie it just has no pacing and really bad camera work like you're you're focused on one thing and oh the zombie's gonna come and then just the zombie comes running in from the side of the frame and it just feels cheap every mm -hmm. sort of quote-unquote jump scare just feels really obvious and cheap and even the director was saying we want to make this really scary and it's not and no character has any sort of character to them. Like, you don't really know what their purpose is. It's it's completely messy, and it feels like a season of a show that they just said, let's just cut all the good parts and try to cram it into a movie. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to, oh, the director or the actor says, like, this kind of thing, I have stopped believing anything anyone says mm -hmm. in general because, yeah. like, you're, you're trying to sell a movie. Yeah. Unless that director has proven themselves like any actor i'm not gonna believe anything you say because your whole job is to like make sure that um 
But if, like, I think there's trusted directors, like, if a Scorsese or a Spielberg or a, you know, no, no not, you can not like their movies or whatever, mm-hmm. but, like, they've proven that they care about cinema and they care about telling a good story, so they're not going to, like, feed you a bunch of bullshit, I don't mm-hmm. think. But, like, the guy who's directing this Resident Evil knockoff spin off movie, it's like, of course he's going to say, like, oh, I really wanted to make the movie scary. It's like, mm-hmm. well, of course you wanted, wanted to, but I don't think... You were very successful yeah, You're trying that. to be, like... Come see, come see my movie. And and even though I did see quite a few ads, I think it's just the channels I watch have the target demographic for this movie. It just seemed like little to no fanfare for mm-hmm. it. It's, it really feels like the studio just dumped it because they needed to get rid of it. I mean, it doesn't have a big name in it or anything. It's It's got... Um, the chick from Skits. Sure. Um, That's about it that I know. It's got Donald Loge in it. Oh. Uh, it's got Neil McDonough, aka that guy. I don't know Neil McDonough. Uh, M. Bison from Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li. He's great. Right. <laughs> uh, there, there, there is a shot of him, like they're watching an old video reel of these two twins pulling like the wings off a dragonfly and they're just like they get like really close they're all blonde and kind of albino-y looking and they get really close and you think these like siblings are about to kiss and then it cuts to neil mcdonough and he's just like smiling really big looking at them and it made me laugh real, really loud and there wasn't a lot of people in the theater but um <laughs> but they all heard me and it just it looked it was such a poor poor cut it, it looked like he was just a big pervert yeah you and i need to stop going to movies because we always <laughs> laugh at parts that aren't designed to we'll stop to... making shit so funny yeah uh yeah that's all i really have to say about okay, that it, it's on the worst of the year list it's shit right. i can't believe they made a worse movie than the original resident evil which i get. i know a lot of people think it's fine but i don't like that first one i guess it's the it's one of the better ones but the best one's three uh that whole series is god awful and i can't believe this is worse than even their worst outings yeah that's bad uh so yeah two major video game series got movies with mortal kombat and resident evil and they were both utter shit isn't there something video gamey coming out soon it's like it might be Oh, maybe I'm just thinking of the last Uncharted. of a TV show. Oh, no, Uncharted's going to be trash. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Skip, skip, skip. Uh, all right. Um, well, I watched the final season of F is for Family. Oh. Yeah. You haven't watched any of it. Really, I, no, I tried watched, it. I, I think I got all the way through season two, and it was just kind of like, I get what this show is. It's not for me. Fair enough. Even though I love, like, Wonder Years, and I like Bill Burr, it's just ugly, and um, just... It reminds me of like a gross, foul King of the Hill. Okay, I I'd say it's pretty accurate. Yeah, not as realistic King of the Hill, you know. King of the Hill's pretty grounded. Yeah, I'd say. But I mean, this show is pretty grounded too. I mean, there's definitely a couple things that are def- like cartoony, uh, but ninety five percent of it is like I could see this just being like a family interacting mm-hmm. with you know their children and their neighbors and stuff but I, I think it was a it was a good good season every season I think has been good uh, I get why you know it's not as popular I think it this is a definitely an animated show that's targeted towards like my parents kind of thing okay because uh, it's just like oh it's about people who grew up in the 70s and mm-hmm. like I watching it, it's just like oh these kids are having experiences that like I imagine I would have had had I grown up in that time sure. and like the kind of dad that I imagine plenty of kids had at that time, which is like lots of yelling and just like toxic masculinity and everything and not talking about their feelings, but it's, uh, I don't know. Bill Burr, I think is really great in it. And Sam Rockwell is his neighbor. Mm. Uh, it's like, <laughs> Sam Rockwell is, is doing anything. his best Matthew McConaughey impression. Yeah. <laughs> all that, all his stuff is always really funny. Um, and usually I hate watching a show where like, a character is such kind of a dickhead it's almost like why, why is he like your hero character like why would I root for this guy but I think like Bill Burr's character does have plenty of heart because he does love his family he's just like is so stressed with his job and dealing with his father's death and stuff in this final season um, but there's there's some nice heart moment uh, you know touching heart moments and uh, you know they all it ends 
in a Christmas episode. And, you know, it's not the greatest finale of all time by any means, but it wraps up the show nicely. And, you know, I, I'm glad that I saw the show, but I don't think I'll, it's a show I'd ever come back to or mm-hmm. necessarily like you have to see after the family, but every episode made me laugh mm-hmm. out loud. So yeah. And it's done now, right? But it's done now. Yeah. Six seasons. Five. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could pitch this entire show in a weekend, probably, if you really wanted to. So, have this for family. Watch it if you got time. But mm. if not, who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll, I'll do some, some real quick mentions. I watch King Richard. Sucks. It's not very good. No one's very good in it. I mean, the kids are fine. Uh, but Will Smith and John Barenthal are bad. John Barenthal's playing, like... Almost like a Ned Flanders sort of golly gee willikers type character. Weird. Yeah, and it's it's bizarre. And it's not like he has to be a tough guy and everything, yeah. but I just don't know if he's pulling it off. Like, I can see Sam Rockwell doing this character, but yeah. not John Barenthal. In defense, I can see Sam Rockwell do any character. Pretty much. Yeah, he's, he's one of the greats. But uh, it's... he. The, the, the annoying thing is... Will Smith is constantly like, they're going to be the next be- biggest thing. They're the greatest, and I have a plan for them, and they're going to be superstars. But if any little thing is not 100% part of his plan, he, like, sabotages everything. And I know watching it, you know everything works out in the end mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, they are very famous, um, huge sports stars. But who? Nope. but it's just so frustrating seeing like just how uh awful he is about and he's obnoxious and uh he interrupts like the coaches and trying to help and i we're supposed to be endeared to him but i just found him really grating and the fact that his like daughters loved him so much even though he was just seemed to sabotage him the whole way even though it works out in the end at the time it seems like he's just sabotaging the whole thing because it's not perfect and uh yeah he's just not likable and it's not a very good movie and i gave it a a d plus because you know how uh it's like breaking bad came out and madman came out and and like all these shows it's like all about the anti-hero and Mm -hmm. everything it just seems like there seems to be a lot of stuff recently where like you have a character who like is your hero character who you are supposed to root for, but they're not really doing anything like worth rooting for. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, well, it's not like you know, Walter White was always fighting for his family, or uh, Don Draper was always just like the best in the biz, or whatever. But it's just like, oh, here's a shitty person, and because they made someone else great, that makes them cool. It's mm-hmm. like, n- like that's an interesting character, but that's not someone I want to watch an entire movie about. It's like he's a he's a side character who pushes your main character forward. Mm-hmm. Um, Real quick, uh, my fiance wanted to watch the Kevin Hart Netflix true story. The I didn't know there was one. Uh, so yeah, Kevin Hart has a new show on Netflix called True Story, where he plays kind of a fictionalized version of himself. Like he plays the biggest comedian in the world, and he has a shitty brother, and his brother kind of puts him into this jam where this guy is like kind of trying to extort uh, him for like six million dollars. Because uh, he, like, Kevin Hart's character cheats on his wife, and the girl he, like, brings back, he, like, wakes up the next morning and, like, doesn't remember her, like, coming back with him, but she's dead. And so his brother is like, oh, I'll call a guy and we'll get this taken care of. Like, we can't call, or call the cops because, you know, this will ruin your career. You're the biggest star in the world. Mm-hmm. And then something happens, and that adds more to the trouble. And the entire first two episodes. It's just, like, Kevin Hart being an asshole to, like, his manager and his joke writer and to his brother. And it's like, yeah, like, you're in a situation you shouldn't have been in, but, like, nothing about Kevin Hart's character is, like, endearing at all. Like, it... And, I, like I said, I've only watched the first two episodes. I have no desire to watch the show because I don't think it's really that good. Um, but it's just the whole time, like, do I care what happens to fucking Kevin Hart in this <laughs> show? Because... Like, like I said, he is kind of a dick, and it's like one of those things where, like, because he's a celebrity with, like, all this money and stuff, it's just, like, and he's, like, going, to, there's, like, a scene where he goes to a kid's hospital, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to like Kevin Hart, because he's, like, nice to this kid who's dying of cancer, but, like, in the back of my mind, like, the second he, like, walks out of that room, he gets a call from his brother, he's like, I don't fucking care, like, just handle it, god damn it, like, we gotta cover all this shit up, it's, like, nothing about Kevin Hart's character than the two hours of television I watch, it's like, oh, he's cool, mm. just, uh, I, I don't want to see more of these characters, yeah. just, like, people who are shitty, 
And then it's like, oh, but they didn't mean to do yeah, this. Yeah, it all worked out at the end, so yeah. you gotta like them. No, we need more Ted Lassos, just completely. Ted Lassos, Eleanor uh, Schweppes. Sh- <laughs> Who? From a good place, do you know? Or the- <laughs> Eleanor Shell Strop. Shell, Shell Strop. <laughs> I know it wasn't Schweppes. <laughs> That's a ginger <laughs> ale. <laughs> but yeah, more positive, yeah. happy shows. Just people who mean what they say and, and are just good human beings. Enough of this this garbage. Uh, do you have anything else? And I can knock uh, out. I don't think so. Two more things, real quick. I think I. Oh yeah, I watched a movie called Munchies. I may have heard. It's about a it's this. a Gremlins ripoff. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's so funny because like it's like oh. It's one good. of those things where it's like oh if you smoke and then blow weed uh, weed smoke into this little creature's face it. He gets hungry. No, they're just sure. they they just like to chew on things, so they oh, call them munchies. Okay. But it's like I know aliens uh, created the Aztec temples and stuff like that, and I'm here to find out that uh, or to discover that that is true. And then one of these aliens is just like living in the cave, and they scoop it up and put it in a backpack and take it home, and it's got a little gizmo voice and. And then, you know, like with Gizmo, oh, don't get it wet, don't feed it, otherwise it will turn. With this, like, Don't keep it dry. <laughs> <laughs> starve it. Starve it. Um, it's like, oh, if you, it's like a worm. If you cut it in half, two more oh, okay. will grow. But it's, it's like all of a sudden they get cut and they're like wearing sunglasses and smoking cigarettes and driving cars and going like, hey, mama, you want to come in my car? And so it's like they instantly turn into like these weird stereotypes. And it's, it's really dumb. It's goofy. It, it's like. You know, you have your gremlins, and then layer below that is critters, and layer below that is ghoulies, and then you have, you know, you could throw in your puppet masters or whatever, and a couple layers down, then you get munchies, because there's there's no art to these monsters. They're just literally hand puppets that are just, like, kind of shaking whenever okay. they talk. It's it's real bad. Sound. Why? Why do you watch these things? Where do uh, you find them? Well, because uh, Pat Oswald retweeted that... Uh, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 guys released their list of, oh, okay. of things they're going to do. And the sequel to Munchies is Munchie backwards. Totally backwards. Yeah. You start with Munchie, go to Munchies. But I guess this is like one singular Munchie that it's maybe more of a comedy. And I was just going to watch that. I was like, oh, it's a part two? Well, I better watch Munchies first so I can understand this deep Munchie lore. And uh, so I haven't just gotten around to Munchie 1 yet. And I don't even know why. Munchie's lore. (laughs) People were saying it's just like trying to wrap your head around Munchie. uh, It it, it takes takes some real uh, fortitude to do so. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I, I need to watch this. So What else you got, Steve? Uh, so a few weeks back, I played uh, Unravel, mm. and we talked about it on the pod. Uh, two week, uh, a week ago or so, I beat Unravel two, mm. uh, and beautiful game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, except this one, you get a, a partner, which I thought would be like a fun sort of uh, addition to the thing. So you have to, you know, you're switching between the characters, and you have to sort of launch one up and then that one's going to swing you across mm-hmm. like it added a fun little new dynamic uh to the game uh told a new story i didn't love it as much as the first mm. one like the gameplay was just as good and visually very appealing um i think the first one's story had a bit more heart to it and was more about you know kind of like this loving story about like life in general where this one was about like two orphans who were escaping like an abusive area and then just like eventually getting out of it like it it wasn't all that interesting of a story um and it was also i feel like it felt half as long as the Hmm. first game so it just like went by super quick where the first game took me uh, like twice couple. the characters have the story so yeah. you get one or the other <laughs> so i i recommend it if you really enjoyed the first one but it, it, was, it was a little disappointing it could it should have had a couple more levels and i wish the story was a little bit uh more engaging hmm. but it's a shame still still very cute and oh it was also much easier too like hmm. the first one there were a couple uh like puzzles i was like how the fuck do i do this and i actually had to like go on uh, a walkthrough thing online to figure it out this one I don't think I ha- ever had to do that yeah so. 
Sounds cool. Yeah. But <laughs> I know you, you play, don't care. But <laughs> no, I mean, maybe it's, our it's, fan will. Oh, it's, <laughs> <laughs> hey, D seven seven nine eight two four seven one three five on Twitter. You like Unraveled too? Huh? Uh, yeah. I, I like those types of games, like the insides and the limbos and yeah. things like that. I mean, I, it's just I play so many action adventure games where it's a forty hour game of samurais or gunfights mm-hmm. or whatever and it's just like oh let me play something simple and yeah. it's it was a nice decompress to it it's just you know i play these games and it's like oh well that was a cool way to spend eight hours mm-hmm. and now i'm never gonna play it again <laughs> but now on to a game where maybe not hard but definitely has you a l- little more to do in the game than just two yarn boys swinging it up you know <laughs> or yarn, yarn boy yarn girl uh no i think they're well, it's their their yarn. Anywho, anywho, the game you were talking about. Yeah, you you're the one that played it. I mean, you played it too. I know. And I you were ta- you I already were... talked about it, but uh, so I let you borrow Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I had a good time with it. I didn't think I was going to, but I did. Yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely not the game. Like I guess Mass Effect is like this. Okay. Uh, I never played Mass Effect. Neither, 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 I. I know it like has I hear Mass Effect. <laughs> great, but I never played it. Great until it's not. That's yeah. what I hear. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is not my usual go-to, but because it it is a familiar IP, I, mm-hmm. I I needed a new game. I had to pick it up, and I kicked myself because like two weeks later it was like forty dollars at Walmart, and I paid full mm. price for it like <laughs> on release day, and I hate that so much. But whatever, when it's just money. <laughs> so what do you think of this game, Steve? Uh, I really liked it. I, I'm i not huge on games where there's optional choices. Like, I kind of like a more streamlined mm-hmm. narrative. Is that, like, talking about the dialogue and stuff? Yeah, just, like, what do you want to say? At, like, these characters are talking, what mm-hmm. do you want to say in this conversation? And mm-hmm. you, it's oh, it was always, like, pick two. Or I mean, I guess technically... A lot of them were like pick three if you like just didn't say anything at yeah. all, um, and I mean for the most part you're always going to get to the same mm-hmm. end result. It's just it alters the game slightly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, but it was interesting because like every choice I made, I felt like I was making the wrong one because every important choice there were consequences to, mm. but there were also benefits. And once I beat the game, I went back and was like, okay, so what would have happened if I chose this? And it was like, oh, okay, so it would have made this thing harder at this time, but this thing easier at this time. Okay. So that was the good thing. It wasn't just like you just. It wasn't just you made a the wrong choice. It just made something harder versus something. I, I didn't even look that stuff up. I, I just figured a lot of it would just be dialogue, or because you know, there's one where who do you choose to be your monster gift? Is it going to be Groot or is it going to be Rocket? Who did you pick? I chose Groot. So did I. Okay. So it's, it's just like I figured, okay, you make it Rocket, a couple dialogue cha- changes, and, and, and you just swap the, the characters around. Not much change to the gameplay, just a little bit of dialogue. I didn't realize it made th- certain things easier and certain things harder. It's yeah. good to know. Uh, I don't think that particular choice made anything that different i think it was more like if you chose rocket you're a costume you could pick up is here versus over here oh. or something like that mm. or you couldn't get a certain costume if rocket was uh oh. chosen um but i i chose groot simply because he seemed the most monstrous yeah. it's like i get that like rocket is more intense and groot doesn't appear very uh groot doesn't appear very threatening just from his personality but he is a hulking tree monster that is the last of his kind. Like, yeah. That would be way more interesting to hold on to than just a genetically altered raccoon yeah. thing. Uh, but I is Lady, do you know if Lady Hellbender is a character in the comics? <laughs> no I, idea. I have never heard. Nope. Because that's the thing. It's like there's characters in this. It's like I know these characters from the movies, but all these other characters that are like introduced, like I assume Raker is a character in the comics. His name's not Raker. There is a, like, grand unifier figure, mm-hmm. but I don't think his name is Raker. Yeah. The, the the church, I guess, has been pretty vague in the comics of okay. what they do, and it's, this really kind of focuses um, them a little easier or a little better. But I think uh, visually it's super appealing. I, I like that because I was worried when I was playing this game it was just going to be the Avengers game, which I've heard nothing but, like, 
awful things mm-hmm. about. Um, but this was a story with a clear vision and clearly takes inspiration from the movies because uh, Star Lord wasn't always a dude who was into eighties music mm-hmm. and like wore leather jackets and talked about like Hasselhoff and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. He was just a dude who hung out in space mm-hmm. and who just happened to be from Earth. But I liked all that stuff. Uh, did you do the karaoke mission or something like that at the bar with Rocket and Groot? Nope. Okay. So I looked this up because there's a part where Rocket and Groot go off by themselves on Nowhere. Mm-hmm. And then you can look in the window and they're at the bar. And I was like, okay, well, they're probably going to be chilling there for a while. I'll come back. And I walked away and then there was a mini cutscene, and I went back to see if they were still there and they were gone. Hmm. And so like if you went to the bar, you were going to get into like a karaoke battle with some dude. <laughs> And then if you won, I, it was like a mini game kind of thing. You got in to go to the uh, uh, collector's emporium for free, mm. as opposed to paying five thousand credits to get in. Did you pay the five thousand to see the stuff? I don't remember. What do you see? Apparently, it's just a bunch of Easter eggs. I didn't pay for because, like, I only have oh, oh, credits. yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I remember going like, well, I don't know if I need this money later in the game. Yes, yeah. which. I guess you don't. Yeah. Uh, so I should have just used it, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, there's... I, you could have. I mean, we're just going to... I guess we could just be talking for a while. Like, what'd you choose? what yeah. yeah. So we won't do all that. We can talk about it more off. Uh, well, well, did you win the brain? Uh, like, there's like a card game or a shell game or something with a big floating brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, you like win the first hand did you go back for a second hand? no neither did i because I, I heard uh, a little thing it's just like don't go back a second time he takes all your money <laughs> yeah. like, okay good good to know well, uh, but that's also when i thought money meant anything in this game yeah like there's stuff you can buy and there's you know a, f- a fine you can or cannot p- pay mm. later in the you know in the game which i guess like if you spent all your money then you just wouldn't be able to pay the fine if you wanted to yeah but like in the end, none of it really, really mattered. mattered yeah. um, I could see in future games that being a bigger thing. Yeah. Like I said, I liked, I liked it visually. I liked all the uh, voice acting. Uh, Star-Lord was my least favorite. Mm-hmm. He just kind of seemed like the most out of place. The guy who did was Drax and Rocket, I thought, were both great. Mm-hmm. Um, Gamora was fine. And this was all stuff like I've never really seen before. And I feel like I learned more about like the comic sort of universe and these characters. And I think... I. If I have one complaint, it was just so much dialogue, yeah. and eventually got to the point where, like, because like you could just find random items, and that random item leads to a uh, optional conversation, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, if that conversation lasts a minute, cool. But the conversation lasts like eight minutes a piece. I was yeah. like, oh my! So I got to the point where I was just like hitting the circle button to just skip to the conversation. Yeah. I was like, I know this means like nothing. This mm-hmm. is just like fun little like, oh, this is a reference to whatever. But yeah, all the boss fights were cool, and I I liked the fact that something you could have done in level or chapter three affected something in chapter 10 mm. you know there was it wasn't just like you do something and it instantly affects it um the combat i thought was a lot of fun and i liked doing the jump up and drop the firework mm-hmm. attack and stuff and being able to pull Groot in i i used rockets uh like grenade thing the most it was the, yeah i just felt like that was the most effective and you know what i thought about playing this game i was like man this is a really well put together story and it's like Honestly, this feels like this would probably be the story for Guardians 3. Because mm-hmm. Guardians 3, involved, we know it involves Adam Warlock. We've seen this gold group and mm-hmm. stuff. Not necessarily that the... I don't know if they're this church and the gold... They're different people. Different people, yeah, yeah. Um, but it just seems like the kind of thing where... Like, of course, they would go into Drax's mind and stuff because, like, Drax is the emotional sort of character with the dead family and everything. Mm-hmm. And it seems like, chances are, like, I I think Drax is going to die he's in this dead. next one. Because <laughs> he's he said, absolutely like, dead. Yeah, he's, he's 100% dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I just, like, as I was playing it, I was just like, man, this just seems like, I this is how I imagine, like, the third movie playing out. Yeah. And doing these, like, this grand epic space battle thing at the end. That was the other thing. It's like, every mission, I was like, man, this feels like the finale of this game. Like, when you're pulling the generators out mm. of, as the girl's, like, attached to the um, giant beam in the yeah. sky. It's like, okay, this is, like, the final fight. I mean, I knew there was other missions, and it's like, oh, then you fight Raker, and then that's the, oh, that's the final mission because you're doing this huge space battle thing. But then there's more stuff. <laughs> I, I I didn't like the final, final battle okay. with... Magus mm-hmm. or whatever it just seemed like it's such a cliche for go for your 
these big action games like okay you defeat the bad guy but now the bad guy's really big mm-hmm. and it's like i and i just i just didn't care about it yeah. i did like that the idea of um what are the guardians best at being annoying and that's <laughs> kind of how you beat the final boss it's, mm-hmm. it's not really about the fight it's just about choosing the right dialogue to mm-hmm. annoy him i thought that was kind of fun great soundtrack throughout yeah. the whole thing yeah. i like that they actually had like 30 80s hits Mm -hmm. so that was cool do you have any slowdowns or lag or skipping or nothing like that because sometimes when it got a little too chaotic it it just oh uh yes a little bit not to the point where like it stopped Mm -hmm. but there was a slight lag yeah 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 and the only other thing i'll say is i loved in the grand big sort of major action piece as you're on your way to fight raker is uh them throwing uh, Lady Hellbender throwing you the cassette player and you jumping mm. up with Fing Fang Foom in the background yeah. shooting flames <laughs> and like the two uh Nova Core ships is like yeah. that's cool and you know cut to him going like bro it's so metal <laughs> I, I thought I, that was my favorite bit in the in the in the game. But yeah I, I liked all this stuff and it I it it just felt a little long sometimes and mm-hmm. I didn't care for the final final battle but uh altogether Really, really well done, and it impressed me more than I thought it was going yeah, to. Yeah, I so really had a good time. I hope they make another one. Yeah, and I could see them doing a more Jedi Fallen Order, where it's like, here's your ten planet, or here's your six planets. You go to, um, it'll be a little more open world. It mm-hmm. won't be as linear. You'll be able to play as any of the characters yeah. and summon the other ones. I was uh, talking to somebody at work, and he's like, did it bother you that you only played a Star-Lord? And I was like, I get why people would want to like hop back and forth, but it didn't bother me mm-hmm. in terms of this game that yeah. I was only Star-Lord. And it was kind of like Kingdom Hearts combat style. Was just like, they were essentially like just summon characters, but mm-hmm. I like that they were always around you mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, or that you could break apart, and you only have access to two characters in this time. And mm-hmm. um, I think the huddle also was kind of a fun dynamic of like boosting yeah. them up. It, it it didn't really like add much, but it was just a nice little. Touch yeah, I part. always did it by accident. I'm like, there's so many shoulder button controls to yeah. do things, and I would accidentally hit those two together. I did it accidentally once or twice, but I I was pretty good about not doing it unless I wanted to. And and I thought I was picking the proper choice because it always seemed like okay, there's one where they're gonna agree with you, and there's one where they're gonna disagree with you. And it, I feel like I picked the disagree one more often. It's like. It'd be like, man, we're getting beat out there. And the options are like, rally the troops or admit that you guys suck. And it'd be like, well, yeah, rally the troops and get everybody hyped. And then you try to rally the troops and they're like, what are you talking about, Star-Lord? You're a fucking idiot. I roll. Yeah. And then go back. It's like, really? Am I supposed to say we're pieces of shit? Come on. So, and, and it just didn't feel like it It did anything. Did they do a super move after that? No, it's it's like, not, they don't do a super move. They just, just get all, all their attacks just do more damage. Okay. But, but if you, even if you fail, all your attacks do more damage. It's just they aren't boosted. Okay. Um, or maybe it's not only their attacks do more damage, but their uh, different option of attacks you can choose from. I think that might regenerate faster. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, it, it took me a couple huddles to figure out, like, oh, the clue. It's like, it was pretty obvious, like, the clues. It's like, if it says, like, oh, man, the the game out there is just not working for us and but there will be an option with like the word game in it, mm. and you always had to choose that one yeah. but i did the same thing at first i was like oh well i'm gonna choose the one where it's like oh this seems like a positive thing to say <laughs> but it's like it's not about that it's like yeah. even when you choose the shitty thing it's like he says something shitty in the beginning because it's like he's turning it yeah so the second sentence he says mm-hmm. is actually positive They're like oh yeah that's right and and the the those were just a little too long for me because it just felt like you would hit it and they'd all join up and then they all do that thing they're all like <laughs> yeah. I know nobody who's listening to this can see what I'm doing, but trust me, it's funny. <laughs> and, and it just made me laugh, and it was goofy. And uh, I yeah. guess my favorite part of that is that it cued uh, a random mm. song, so it was kind of fun to kick ass to a soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, so I liked that part of it um, because at no other point in the game could you just put on music as you're fighting people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I thought was weird. Like, when you're in the ship, you can do your upgrades, you can talk to people, you can look at stuff, and there's, like, a battery room down by, like, where Groot... That drove me insane! What is that for? What are you supposed to do there? Nothing. Nothing. And then you'll have, like, a cabinet that's open, and you can go up and shut it. Why? Who cares? It doesn't affect anything! (laughs) Well, okay. So did you hide... Well, 
Well, I guess we're talking about it now. Yeah. Did you hide the animal, the llama, or did you hide the parts? Um, wasn't there an option to hide both? Mm, no. I don't think so. Oh, I think I hid the weapons. Okay. See, that's that's where you were different. Is that's the place where you hide the stuff? Yeah, but no, it would just be in the, like the lounge area. There would just be in one of the doorways. There would just be like a cabinet that has like a, a loose door. Oh, and you just oh, you're talking about it. that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And it's just like close it. I'm like, okay, does that affect anything? No. And then when the next time you're on the ship, it's open again. Yeah, I was waiting for there to be achievement. It was like, oh, you closed it ten times. So or then. there was a part where uh, you it you go back to your childhood bedroom mm-hmm. for the second time, and you actually like could walk through and like go through the house. Yeah. And then in the back, like I don't know if you did this because I explore everything. Like in the behind the stairs, there's a room where there's like a fridge where there's a door that's cracked open. I was like, mm-hmm. oh. It's, this is like a dream sequence, mm-hmm. and it's like that's representing the ship, but it, it, that didn't equivalent. Uh, that wasn't. It didn't mean anything. Mm. And it's just like, what is the purpose of this door? It just yeah. added like dialogue for it's like rocket. Make sure to close the fridge yeah. or what? It's, it's like Does it make you feel it, like you're interacting with the yeah, real world. I, or, I was waiting for that to do anything. Maybe you know? it did have something, but it was like take took too long to develop and they're like just cut it leave the animations in but cut yeah. the rest of this stuff i i closed that door at least 40 times yeah, yeah every time <laughs> i went by it's just like shut the fucking door yeah i was like is there gonna be one time where it just stays closed uh adam warlock i didn't know i don't know anything about adam mm-hmm. warlock this is so this is the first iteration <laughs> i've seen of him um other than like wikipedia articles where i've just seen comic stills mm-hmm. um do you know if he's always t- always talk like that like in the comics and stuff where he's I'm doing not like this sure and it took me a bit. second to catch it and then i was like is he really rhyming every yeah. single sentence i mean i kind of liked it yeah, a lot it's not bad <laughs> I, I don't know if that is a a trait of his okay it, i just kept thinking of v for vendetta mm. um and i it, it definitely adds to the comedy of them sort of like making fun of him call him shakespeare and they all like rhyme and he's like i see you're mocking me and like that kind of <laughs> stuff so it laid the groundwork for that final battle mm-hmm. but uh yeah, it was cool seeing him. It's interesting to see him like punch Drax and like knock him out, but then punch Star Lord, and Star Lord's just like, "Ow!" It's like <laughs> Adam Warlock could probably like just decimate your face instantly. Yeah. But if if I were to cut out anything, it'd be any of the flying stuff. Like, what was the point? You of that? always hate vehicle stuff. No, and and it's fine if it if it adds something to it, but it was nothing. It was like I kept running into rocks, mm-hmm. and it's just like. I, I can't tell where I'm supposed to go. It's like, okay, I'm going down, hit a rock. Like, okay, I go up, hit a rock. Are you talking about the Fing Fang Foon? Yeah. And then it's like... That pissed me off. I died so many times. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, I can't do anything. What am I doing wrong? Yeah, I I probably died like seven times yeah. so quick because it's like, oh, I you. it's hard to really steer. Uh, steer. And the controls, it doesn't seem like it does much. It's yeah. just like a little... A little up, like a, little down. A little up, little down. It's like, oh, this is going to be like nearly impossible to do. And then I was like, all right, let me try this again. And then I just like kept it up the entire time. Mm-hmm. And it just flew pretty much over the entire thing. <laughs> I didn't have to like glide through anything. It was just like, if you just keep pointing up, it's just going to steer the plane over the mountains, essentially. Yeah. I was like, oh. So this was just a fuck you to, it, to me yeah. essentially and even the first time you're flying it's like oh you get a booster and you got guns and it's like oh you could shoot down all these people but it doesn't really matter at all you could just like boost through the whole thing and skip shit it's yeah it, it, it wasn't I, developed enough to be it, it, that i think it should have been included uh it's just just w- way underwhelming could just cut it all together make it a cutscene. Yeah, I mean, it feels weird that you spend so much time on the ship and, like, traveling different planets and going to space stations and all this stuff. So you have this thing that, like, is designed for kind of space battle. To not do space battles would seem like a, a missed opportunity. So I like that it's there. I think it could be improved on for sure. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I But once again, I just hope they make a sequel. Um, I'd be interested to see what they do. And, are you know, will they do ego because they definitely laid the groundwork yeah. like, oh your dad was from space and mm-hmm. he does have these guns that change to his DNA or something. I thought that was so funny when she gave it to him for his birthday it's yeah. like here you go and it's like guns <laughs> this kid's 13 years old and you're giving him guns I don't care if it's from his space dad they're guns <laughs> I don't even own a gun rack <laughs> I don't even own a gun what am I gonna do 
with a gun. Right. <laughs> best, best line. Love that line. I have beat that joke into the ground where like I'll go to anytime there's a someone opens a present, whether it's at Christmas or a birthday party or whatever, it's always <laughs> they, as soon as they start to open it, or like if someone gives me a present, it's like if it, if it's a severed head, I'm gonna be very upset. <laughs> I think I can't remember if that was the second one or the first one. I think it's second. But I use that bit a lot, or it's, or I'll open it, and if like other people are around who like can't see in the box, I'm like. A gun rack? What am I going to do? I don't even own a gun. And like the two people who have seen the movie will like laugh really hard. And everyone's just like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? It's like, oh, it's like the best present joke of all time. And, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, should we move on? Let's move on. Okay. Uh, so our main topic of the night. little odd choice, I think, for us. I have one more thing. But. Oh, do you? Okay, okay. Zip, zip, zip. Take it back. All right. Play Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. It's good shit. What uh, else you got? Last thing, I finished a book. I finished mm. it, I think, uh, the day we recorded, or the day after we recorded mm-hmm. last time. Um, it's the second book in the Red Rising trilogy. Uh, we talked about the first mm-hmm. book on the mm-hmm. podcast and how much I really liked it. And so it's Game of Thrones meets The Hunger Games, but in space. Mm. Um, so the first book is definitely more Hunger Games. The second book is even better than the first book. I really, really like the first book, but this second one takes all the stuff of the first book and just heightens it. It's now no longer kids in an institute. It's just all-out space war. Mm-hmm. And just cool character after cool character get into wacky space shenanigans <laughs> and uh, just political battles. And they, the your main character, Darrow, just keeps like thinking of like just the right play at the right time and it's just it doesn't make sense like how this character is just so good at like everything it's almost a little annoying but uh it's just so fucking badass mm. and it would be the i think it'd be the the next big thing if they put it to film uh you heard it here first <laughs> you heard it here first I can't talk. I don't know what your problem you is. You heard it here first, folks. Okay. Nope. Just keep talking because I'm cutting all that. <laughs> Dab a zoop zap ziva. It uh, sounds cool. Yeah, it is. I, I, What's the second book called? Uh, Golden Sun. Golden Sun. So, uh, I started reading book three. I, I had this discussion with my fiance today. You, you know what I realized? I was trying to think of like trends of because I've only recently started like reading more books, it's like, okay, books versus movies. It's like, you had in, in the, at least in the, the trilogies that I've read, uh, in the movie world, you have movie trilogies. It always seems like the first one is a hit, and then they do a second one, and the second one is more often than not, like, not very good. And the third one they do kind of brings it back. There's obviously exceptions <laughs> to that rule, like Dark Knight, second Hunger Games film, but like books, the first book is always like a usually your popular one because you know it establishes the world and mm-hmm. you know brings you brings you in and like oh I can't wait to read the second one and the second one usually usually is takes everything you like about the first one and makes it bigger mm-hmm. and you're just like that's fucking awesome now that we've set the and, stage I could get to the good shit yeah, like now you, there's no there's no downtime of like I have to learn all these characters mm-hmm. I have to learn the world it's all just like go 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 and then every second book ends with like some big plot twist at the end and then the third book is like okay now I'm recovering from this event at the end of the second one and then you have your big epic finale and so it's just like but it's always like the third book is always the first half is kind of slow Mm -hmm. so you can get to the good shit at the end but the second book I've found it's like every I've read three trilogies this year and the second book is always the best one Mm. versus the movie world where it's like most most of the time the second one isn't as good as Mm -hmm. either the first or the third like die hard uh, Indiana Jones. I know there's some of those series I've continued on and made like five, six, seven of them. But if you're just looking at your core trilogies, most of the time the second one is never yeah. as good. Usually, and, and it's it's interesting to see that trend. Um, but yeah, I I wanted like to tell you everything that like kind of happens in this book, but I also think you yeah would I think you should probably it. not because yeah, you told so. me a lot of when we were off air. I just had a bunch of questions for that first one, and it's like I have a pretty good sense of what's going on in it where mm-hmm. it's like okay well 
it's one thing if I had read the first book and it's like, all right, give me some some tasty tidbits of, of part two. But I haven't even gotten to the first one, so no tidbits yeah. for me. Uh, if you like sci-fi, if you like fast-paced, easy action, uh, easy read, tons of action, lots of cool characters, I highly recommend the Red Rising trilogy. There is a second uh, trilogy, book three of that trilogy comes out uh, next year, I think in July. Um, so, so you got some time to. So you got some time, uh, but I think this might be, depending on how this third book wraps up, this might be my favorite series I've ever read. And I wow. love the Farseer trilogy. I think the Farseer trilogy is a better written book, uh, but this book is the most fun I've had reading. These past few books have been the most fun I've had reading, uh, possibly ever. Um, and yeah, if if any of you guys want to comment, uh, message uh, on email or Twitter, or whatever, and ask me uh, Red Rising questions, I'd love to talk about it uh, with you guys. So there's that. What's that email, Steve? Well, that email you can listen to the rest of the episode and we get it at the end. <laughs> now you have to listen to the whole thing. And they just jump to the end. <laughs> like. Red Rising trilogy, book one and two, both great. Cool. Main topic? Main topic, let's All get it. All right, let's do it. So, we watched kind of an unconventional movie for this podcast. You know, we're big dorks and we watch a lot of genre-heavy things. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know what you guys like to hear about. <laughs> Actually, we don't because nobody talks to us. We don't know what you want. What do you want from us? We'll do it, man. Point to an object in the room and I'll fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm naked right now. <laughs> Uh, but we watched Netflix Tick Tick Boom, directed by Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah, a little up and comer. <laughs> yeah, you may have heard of him. Keep did, a, did a silly president musical called Hamilton. Ooh. Mm. Which I didn't know he directed it until I looked it up at the end. Oh, I, yeah? I wasn't paying attention, and like I was telling you uh, earlier in the week, I didn't even know what this movie was about. Okay. I just, when the Netflix preview came on, he's doing a little ditty thing and he's talking about uh, how he has to create a song in a week. And I just assumed he was like a jingle writer and he was an advertising guy. I had no idea this was the movie about the guy who made Rent. And I think if I would have known that, I wouldn't have watched this because Rent sucks. <laughs> and uh, you're not a musical guy. And I'm not a musical guy, but if music is good, I'm fine with it. It's It's a lot of the, you know, singing in the middle of, you know, your lunch because you have an emotion and everybody <laughs> sings along. It's just, it works for animation, doesn't really work in live action for me or especially filmed. If it's on a stage, you sure. kind of know what you're getting into. Yeah. But when it comes to a movie, it, it just it just seems off. But I'm glad I went in this without knowing anything because like I slowly pieced it together and it's just like, oh, look, all of his friends are dying of AIDS and, oh, and they're complaining about rent. And I was like, Wait a second. <laughs> this sounds familiar. <laughs> and then it, eventually it all kind of clicked and it's like, oh, I feel really dumb. But I love this movie. Yeah, when, uh, we didn't go into details because we wanted to talk about it on the pod. Yeah. But last time I saw you, I asked you about it and you were just like, yeah, I love it. I was like, that blew me away because one, I was surprised you watched it. And two, it's like, <laughs> oh, a musical Ben liked? Yeah. Hey, uh, I mean, if it's not South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, it is... You know, nothing can beat that musical. That is the greatest yeah. musical of all time. I, I think what helped this movie is how good Andrew Garfield is, and I don't even mean like his singing. Like his singing's is fine. It's fine. It's, yeah. But you know, I've seen interviews with him where he's just like, yeah, I was not a singer. Like this is the first time I've pretty much ever sung. Um, but you know, Lynn coming from his background guided him to to sound good. It's, but yeah, it's not like any of his numbers like blew me away, but. He's a good singer, and once again, Andrew Garfield's just a fucking great actor. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I I assume the only rent you've seen is the movie, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you didn't like it? No. <laughs> and I, I can't even say I saw the whole movie. I just, I've seen parts, and I've, no, I've heard the songs before in yeah. the past, and the songs are terrible. Um a lot of theater people will strongly disagree with you. I'm sorry. It's it's not for me. Uh, a bunch of entitled little shits complaining about not having to pay rent. Hey, I wish I didn't have to pay rent either, but I, I just I don't like these characters. Mm. And um, yeah, fuck them. 
but they're bohemian. And they're I don't like give a shit. Living for the now or whatever. Uh, what? Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I do think it's shitty that their friend said you could live here rent free and then like goes back on it or something like that, right? Uh, so I don't know if I ever really saw it all the way through. I was I saw it in two thousand and six. Okay. Uh, movie came out in 05 and I was invited to a sleepover, and um, the guy, his favorite movie at the time was Rent. Uh, he was a musical theater kid at, at okay. in high school, and he was just like, "We're gonna watch Rent." I was like, "Okay," and <laughs> I so I don't really remember it all that well, um, but I know Rent songs because I myself am a big fan of musical theater, um, so I. I know Rent, but I don't think I've ever actually seen it from start to finish. Okay. Uh, so I don't recall the the story other than they need to pay rent. And, <laughs> and die of AIDS. And die of AIDS, yeah. 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 And it really, like, my main thing, like, I didn't know shit about Rent until, I mean, I, like, I always knew of it, but it wasn't until uh, Team America that I had any sort of, like, gist of what Rent was. Mm-hmm. Lease the music. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has AIDS. Uh, I, so... Where do I want to start with this? Do you want to start actors? You want to start songs? You want to do quick story? Uh, I guess let's. I guess start with story, and then we can talk about songs, characters as we go along. Sure. So his name's uh, John Larson, right? Jonathan, Jonathan Larson. Jonathan Larson. Yeah. Uh, he has been working on a musical for like eight, eight years, years, and he's only what, like twenty. So. Oh, he's he's like a couple of weeks from his thirtieth birthday, That's right. and like a big thing is like he he wanted to do something before he got to thirty because like once I am in my thirties, I'm no longer a young person. Yeah, that was his whole fear. Yeah, that's right. So he's been working on this since he was twenty two. It's like a space robot epic thing. I, mm-hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Which what I'm the story sure was. you would be like, I want to see that yeah, show. They were doing the songs <laughs> from it, and I was just like, this is cool. Yeah. Why haven't they done this? And I don't know if this was an actual. Or if those songs actually came from that mm-hmm. original work, or yeah, I wasn't quite sure if like the songs were written specifically for this movie because like I imagine Tick Tick Boom was just the actual stage play was him just describing these events. Like I don't mm-hmm. think they would have played those songs in this show, Maybe. but I don't really know because that's a good way to do a follow up of like, well, I didn't get to do my first one, so I'm gonna. My second one is just going to be the story of how I didn't do that. And then I'm just going to play all those songs anyways. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, and it it was interesting to see him, like, a big part, the big uh, struggle in this movie was like, okay, i got to write this song in a week because I got uh, the showcase is coming up. uh, Or what was it? It, Yeah, the showcase, whatever. He finally, like, cracks it, like, the night before. And then they play this, like, big, beautiful, emotional song. And then it was like, wow, that's great. And then it didn't amount to anything. Yeah. It's just like, damn. And, but that could be part of it. You know, it's like he spent all this time and he put all of his effort into it and even cracked down the last minute to do this thing. And it was all, we can't wait to see what you do next. Yeah. And it's like he could have left that song completely out and not killed himself over it. And he probably would have gotten the same sort of reaction. And I, I But I really liked, I think, whether it was the message or not, what this conveyed about art Mm. um because i like the idea of like here's someone who spent eight years on one thing and struggled and struggled and struggled and finally got to put it on and everyone's like this is the next big thing but it's too expensive yeah and then it's like so do something else it's like i can't imagine working on like anything for eight minutes and then being (laughs) like no it's not for me next but it's like eight years and you think like i think that's a thing a lot of writers do is like oh this is the thing that i want to write first this is going to be my magnum opus this mm-hmm. is like the thing that's going to launch me into stardom it's like this is the thing that i start i that got me into writing or whatever mm-hmm. it's like this is the thing that's going to put me on the map and it's just like that's not how it works 99 percent of the time like yeah there's people who just get lucky and the first thing they do gets them there mm-hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't matter this thing could be great it doesn't mean it's still going to get put on and then he makes another thing and that doesn't get picked up. And then he makes another thing. And then it's Rent, and this is one of the biggest musicals of all time. And he dies the night before. And that's crazy. What a... Oh God. It, it's like, if you knew that, if you knew you were going to make something amazing, 
but you were never going to see it, but it was going to stand the test of time, would you bother still? Do you think you would? Uh, I'm a little bit more narcissistic than you, I think, so <laughs> I would, because yeah. I like the idea of being... Whether you knew my name or not, but you knew my work, mm-hmm. like I could, I could live with that. It's like if I made something that stood the test of time, I think that would be way more important than, uh, you know, my my free time. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, I feel like if I if I got that information, it's like you're gonna make this really cool thing. People are gonna love it, but you will never see it. You'll never see the appreciation for it. You are just gonna die. I may be like okay. I'll do something else then. Good to know. Fuck it. Time to hit the strip club. <laughs> it's like, I, I know my, my potential. I know what I'm capable of. No, I don't even have to prove it. Not even to myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, I... But I really, really liked this movie. Um, Did you think he was gay in the beginning? At first, I was like, like, oh, this is interesting. Andrew Garfield's going to play a gay character. Cause, and not just because it's like musical theater, but he just kind of came off as a little gay. But then he had his girlfriend, and I was just like, oh, this is going to be the thing where you know he, he's pretending to be straight this whole time, but he's actually gay, and then she knew the whole time. Like, no, he's just, just a straight guy. <laughs> That's just the way Andrew Garfield decided to play it. I mean, I think he was just matching... Because there's so much footage of the real Jonathan yeah. Larson, I think he was just trying to match his characteristics. At no point, at least from his performance, did I think he was coming off as gay. Just in the beginning for me. Yeah. I I mean, maybe his he came off more straight because all of his friends seemed to be, like, flamboyantly gay. Mm-hmm. So it's like, in comparison, like, yeah, he's not gay. But, mm. um, yeah, I and Jonathan Larson could very well have been by or whatever yeah. and you're just like it wasn't brought up because yeah. it wasn't important to the story and sure. it it didn't matter it doesn't matter at all no um but yeah at no point in the movie was i just like oh he seems like he could have gone that route so did you have a favorite song uh yeah i don't know what it's called but it's with him and vanessa hudgens are on stage and they're doing the like the not apology apology song mm-hmm. it's like i'm sorry you feel this way and you know that sort of I don't know what it's called. Do you know? Uh, I don't. I yeah. I had a feeling we'd be talking about songs. It's like, I should just look all the other names up, but we're not going <laughs> to. Uh, so I, I like that. It just had a, a really good rhythm, and, and it was very manic, and the the faces they were making on screen yeah, was it, really it was a, good. It was a fun bit. Yeah. I uh, See, I say I love musical theater, and it's, it's those kind of songs that like I tend to dislike more. than like I like the big show-stopping numbers that show, like, the vocal range mm-hmm. and, like, sh- uh, like, really showcase the emotion. Like, those kind of songs that him and Vanessa Hudgens do are fun, and it, but sometimes they take me out of it because, like, f- okay, when I s- imagine a musical, I'm imagining the, like, I can show you the world. Like, those <laughs> kind of songs. And then here's just this, like, silly song that I can be fun, but also, like, takes me m- more out of it because, like, it just seems separate from the big show-stopping numbers okay. that I imagine. Um, so, and it's the only song in this that kind of feels like sure. that, but I did like their performances in that. Vanessa Hudgens, I feel like was not that it was a weird choice. Like she's a good singer and like, I know she did the live action version of Rent mm-hmm. like a year or two ago. So I think like, that's a reason, you know, she has a connection to this material. I think she's done Rent twice. Like she's been two different characters. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and by no means do I think she's bad in it or anything. It just seems like, it almost seems like they got her because no one else in the movie is like a star like yeah. she's the second biggest star in this movie really mm-hmm. but she's barely in it yeah um so it just kind of f- almost felt weird that she was there but by no means that she like less in the movie or anything it just i I, th- I thought it was almost a weird choice uh did you know that the big diner song where like all the people Oh, and they were like, yeah, I was like, Broadway okay, people. well, she was on Cheers. What the fuck is she doing here? Wait, that's Felicia Rashad from the Cosby show. What the fuck is she doing here? And then afterwards, it's just like, okay, they must have a connection to this person in real life. I don't know how, but uh, okay. No, I think they have more of a connection to a Broadway and to uh, Lynn manuel Miranda. Okay. Because uh, there's two women in there who basically played the two female leads in Hamilton. Mm. Felicia Rashad is very prominent in the Broadway community, not just the Cosby show, but that's where she's most known for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Patti LuPone was one of them. 
Is mm. that, I don't know. Mm. But mm. yeah, I think every person in that, that diner number <clears throat> is someone in the Broadway world. Yeah, I think it's, like the two homeless people were like big rent people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was like a fun little like... Yeah, that was a fun little bit. But but it it like I can't remember a single bit of that song because I was taken out of the moment. Going, who's that? Why are they there? You know, it's yeah. just like t- too many cameos at once. Yeah, it was just like, oh, I have all these Broadway friends. Uh, I can't really space them out. It's gonna distract the movie. So we'll just jam them all into one. Yeah. And if you don't like this scene, fine. But Whatever. it's like it's gonna be like. The this scene was specifically designed for theater kids because no one else fucking knows who these people yep. are. Yep. Uh, it, it's the scene in like a Marvel movie where they pass by, like in Amazing Spider Man Two, and he's walking by all the the glass cases of the future villain suits, mm. and so all the the nerd people could go, oh, oh. oh yeah, the broad the Broadway version of Marvel Easter eggs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tick tick boom is the Marvel or is the Broadway equivalent of Amazing Spider Man Two. Andrew Garfield was an amazing. Oh my god! I didn't even. Whoa. Whoa. Anyway. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I think my favorite song might have been the opening song. I I really liked the because he uh, is that the thirty ninety the thirty ninety song. Yeah. I don't get that though. I know he's turning thirty and it's nineteen ninety, but is that all it is? Thirty ninety. Yeah, did, that's basically the, okay. Because it seems like thirty ninety should like that's a code for something, and it just so happened to also be his age in the year he's turning thirty. It just it seemed weird for him to be talking about I'm getting older, and then thirty ninety. It's like well, you're not turning ninety. I just I don't like that. I, I it's so <laughs> I weird. It. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting wording, I guess, mm-hmm. of. Uh, that description but i don't know i just think that that song's really like if there's a song i would listen to on repeat i think it would be that song okay. um because most of the other songs are either silly or uh more somber and kind of depressing uh yeah there, there's a song it's, it's maybe the second or third and it gets really repetitive and i can't even remember what he's saying but i was just like oh my god shut up let's move on and it just kept repeat 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 and it's just like I'm going to turn this shit off if you say that word again. But mm-hmm. I can't even remember what it was. I guess it's not that bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I like that this movie laid the groundwork for after the showcase goes well, but they said like, oh, we can't put on your show. And then his agent is just like, well, my advice to you is write what you know. Mm-hmm. And so he wrote Tick, Tick, Boom, which is autobiographical, <laughs> which is kind of cool. But then it's like, everything that happened in this movie was leading to Rent, mm-hmm. which was also sort of writing what you know, because here's all the shit that I'm dealing with, but I'm just going to tell it from characters I made up versus mm-hmm. my one-man stage show. But, uh, what? Oh. His girlfriend's really pretty. Yes, <laughs> I wanted to talk to, her name is Alexandra Ship. She played Storm. She was Storm. She's not a very good Storm, I don't think. No. But. In her defense, they didn't really give her much to do. Very true. But she was in a movie called Tragedy Girls that I think everybody should watch if you're into a kind of dark comedy horror. It's mm-hmm. like her and Negasonic Teenage Warhead oh. uh, are just these two girls who are obsessed with death and blood and they go out killing people and revel in it and they're high school kids and. Uh, it's just I don't want to talk too much about it, but she's fantastic in it. Uh, I just I yeah. thought she was good in this. Yeah, she's yeah. yeah, she's really good, and I feel so bad for her because she's just kind of like, hey, I have an opportunity. I want to spend five minutes talking about it. He's just like, leave me the fuck alone. I gotta I gotta write my song. I only got a week. We'll talk about it tomorrow. And she's just like, okay, hun, all right, we'll talk about it tomorrow. And then tries to bring it up again. Just like, shut up, you bitch. I'll kill you. And he was like. Very rude, and I did not appreciate it. It's like she just wanted a simple conversation, and you just ran her out of your life. Dum dum. Yeah, but it all, I mean, besides him dying, I was gonna say it all worked, <laughs> it all out. worked out. It all worked out eventually. <laughs> but I, I think that it's kind of like your, you know, your whiplash thing. It's like, do I sacrifice, you know, possible happiness, or do I ha- love? or whatever, for my dream, Mm -hmm. Whiplash took it to the more extreme, where this was sort of more, like, positive way to do it. But, like, I totally get where he was, you know, coming from. It's just like, look, I'm swamped. I'm dealing with all this stuff, and it's like, you're you're a distraction. You're someone I love, and obviously he should have taken the time. I'm not, you know, really defending him, but I get 
you know, the, the struggling artist thing. It's just like, if I can just get this done, everything will be okay. But even if you succeed and let's say like the show did get picked up, it's like, okay, well now I have to like do casting. I got to put on, it's like, then it's all this other stuff. It's like, the the struggle never never ends. So that's, uh, but I, yeah, it's always, we'll talk tomorrow, but there's always, there's always something else. There's always something else. Yeah. Um, have you, can you think of any performances this year that have blown you away? Because I was trying to think of anyone who was like, man, he's so great in this movie. But I think this might be my favorite performance mm, of the year. Maybe. But I I can't... It might just be... I'm saying that now because it's. I just saw it an mm-hmm. hour ago. Yeah. And I just can't think of other stuff. I, I mean, uh, what's his face in Green Knight? Is really good in that. Oh, Dev. Uh, Dev Patel. Dev Patel. Yeah, right. isn't it? It's Dev Patel. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, you know, some things in Black Mass or Midnight Mass. I did it. I did it again. I called it Black Mass. Fuck. But that, Mass. that's different. I'm just yeah, talking sure, about Oscars. But, um, yeah. I mean, I kind of fucking hate the Oscars now. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, I still, you know, appreciate a quality performance and yeah. want people who've never gotten one to get one. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but. Oh, let's talk about uh, Lin Manuel. You know his first yeah. movie he's ever directed, and yeah. I think he, uh, for a first time, fucking crushed and, it. And he didn't direct In the Heights. Uh, no, that was I believe John M. Chu. Hmm. Obviously, he wrote In the Heights. Yes. And, you know, started I, in the original run and stuff. I figured that would have been one of his first things he would want to do. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. I I imagine maybe he was just busy, or whatever. Um, or, you know, it's like, okay, you direct this, I'm going to learn as much as I can from you, because I want to direct something down the line. Sure. And this is just the first thing he was able to do. Uh, and I like that it was kind of a smaller story. It wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, I've kn- I'm have i known for the biggest musical of all time. I could direct Hamilton if I wanted yeah. to. Or but, something like or, West Side Story yeah. or whatever. Um, but it's just like, here's a small story about a guy most people don't know who is behind one of the biggest musicals of all time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Stephen Sondheim was a big part of uh, this movie and an inspiration to Andrew, uh, Jonathan Larson, and who died this past week. Like, the day after it was released. Yeah. And I guess, like, that's even his voice on the recorder. I I did notice. I was like, that's definitely not Bradley Whitford. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's like, I guess Bradley Whitford said some things, and and then he was like, ah, I don't think I would say it that way. And they couldn't get him back in, so he's like, I'll just, I'll just do it. Yeah. And so they just used him. Yeah. Um, which I thought was a nice little touch. Yeah. But uh, what was I saying? Sondheim. Sondheim. Um, Whitford. No, oh, God. I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's interesting that's like a big part of this was Stephen Sondheim and he was insp- uh, inspiration of Jonathan Larson. It's like, you know, Stephen Sondheim had his first Broadway show on, when he was 27. And it was always, like, him trying to sort of emulate this guy. And then now it's like, if Jonathan Larson didn't die from his uh, surprise, essentially, heart attack, Mm -hmm. like, what other shows would he have made? Because it's like, we saw just an inkling of that uh, Suburbia musical. Mm -hmm. And, like, that sounded cool. And then, obviously, Tick, Tick, Boom didn't hit it off, but Rent was huge. But now I think Tick, Tick, Boom has been running for a while. It's like so he made three possibly three great musicals but only one was a you know a hit it's like what would he have made would he have been the next Sondheim would he have made like yeah. a hit musical like would he have even gotten Lin-Manuel because yeah know, uh Jonathan Larson's new show was coming out when his was who then, knows you know, yeah it's like it's interesting to see it's like such talent from someone from who's so young and who was just taken away and we never got to see like what could have been <clears throat> yeah it, you know, like they always say about, oh, Jimi Hendrix, he was the greatest of all time. It's like, yeah, he died in his prime and never right. had a chance to do anything shitty. If, like, Britney Spears died after, you know, that first album, she would have been, like, considered the greatest pop star of all sure. time. Uh, so, yeah, maybe he, maybe it was a good thing he died. Maybe everything else would have been <laughs> fucking shit. Jonathan Larson, Spider-Man Into the Dark. <laughs> Which is funny. I just watched a, a video about like the the creation of Spider-Man Into the Dark mm-hmm. and what what went wrong and things like that. And it was a, it was a really good watch. 
And um, but it sounds like an awful show. Like everybody looks ugly. The costumes are awful. The the villain Swiss Miss is so ridiculously stupid. And the thing that is funny is I could be wrong. Is Swiss Miss also a brand of hot chocolate? Yes. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And they were saying, oh, well, this hits it big on Broadway. We'll maybe bring this to London or Vegas and make it a stage show there. And they spent, like, millions of dollars to fix this one house that they were going to premiere in to be able to handle all the swinging and stuff like that. But it's, it's just, like, it wasn't meant for that. Whereas Vegas has, like, 12 different Cirque du Soleil shows in auditoriums that are built for this sort of thing. If they would have just gone to Vegas first mm-hmm. and, and and did it, it could have potentially have been more popular. Yeah. But the song still sucked. So yeah. I, also the problem is like if you wanna be a real musical, you gotta take it to Broadway. Sure. You can't just I, I get like, that. You can't you know, be a hit musical I the, mean there's off Broadway, but it's still in New York. Mm-hmm. It's like you're not no one's opening musicals in fucking nebraska sure you know? i no, and i totally get why they did but they spent so much money and an effort to do something where they eventually wanted to take it to vegas anyways and it, okay if you want to make it make it in broadway you make this a really good broadway show with really great music and you don't focus so much on the the wire work that mm. <clears throat> is too hard to do in these old buildings and then you can expand on that later it's like do you want a stage show or do you actually want a good musical yeah. and it's like they couldn't find the happy balance and that's why i sucked yeah and like traditionally like because people go to theater they're not expecting fam- like there's you know, popular plays and musicals where it's just like a chair and a black background and like they mm-hmm. just, it's just quality acting and yeah. stuff. Like Broadway or, I mean, there's some impressive uh, stage production for mm-hmm. sure on Broadway, but you could do a thing where you have like Spider Man web swinging and it's just people in black outfits like holding <laughs> like city, uh, like sure. cardboard skyscrapers. Yeah. But no, they like, wanted go, to go big. But they wanted to go big. It's like, I think you could have pulled it off and like have done it low budget mm. and then maybe if it was a hit like okay well now we're gonna like take it take it up a notch and mm. then for our you know our fifth anniversary we're adding wire work and really you know but, but I, I can see if I went and saw Spider-Man on Broadway and there wasn't wire work and crazy swinging sure. stuff it'd be like what I, the fuck I, is I get this? why they did that so that's why sure. they, they should have just gone to Vegas in the first place this is now a Spider-Man in the dark podcast yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> and but, I, I kicked myself because one of the last times I was in New York I was with my aunt and uncle, and they're like, let's go see a show. What do you want to see? We're not seeing Spider-Man. And I was just like, it's fine. I know it's bad. But I'm like, damn it. That was my opportunity. I wish I would have seen it. We're bad or not. I wish I could have just gone and said I experienced that. It's, so it's not playing anymore. No, it's done. Yeah, okay. It I was going to say, like, maybe that, well, that's what we'll do for my bachelor party. Just go see <laughs> Spider-Man musical. Okay. Um, if, it, if it's still playing, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I don't think it is, though. No, I don't think it is. Uh, so, so we went and saw Adam's Family, which was also not good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if I told you this. I think I've told you this story before, but the first time I ever went to New York was on a middle school field trip and uh, to New York, and we saw The Lion King. Mm. And super impressive show, but there's one part in it that I hate it just because it looked so dumb. Mm. And so it's the um, stampede scene. Mm. So what they did was you just had the kid playing Simba standing in place running. (laughs) But then behind him, they took like, uh, like these just foot long, uh, uh, what are they? Wildebeest. Wildebeest, thank you. Wildebeest figures and then put them on a roller and then it was just like <laughs> them going around in a circle to kind of uh, emulate the look of a stampede sure. but it just looked super cheap and like the whole time I'm just like, wow, look at these people in the, like, these fantastic costumes. Oh, they're making the rising sun. Oh, the music's so great. And then here's just like this dumb scene where everyone's like, oh, they're coming up behind me. I was like, oh my god, this is fucking musical theater. I was... I, I was livid and then but like that seeing that show kind of made me go like okay theater is pretty cool and then I've seen m- more shows since then and that kind of stuff doesn't bother me but at the time I was like 
it, it took me out of it because I was like having such a good time up until that scene, mm-hmm. and then just seeing how like much money went into this, but how cheap <laughs> that was. Yeah, like I don't know, if, I don't know if you how you would have done it better, but at the time I was like, this is hmm. this is stupid. This looks I mean, you stupid. just you, you get like a big brown sheet, and and but it has like parts where people have just wildebeest like heads and everybody kind of just goes up and down and it's a wave yeah something simple like that where were you i I wasn't uh, where were you 15 years ago or however shit was in vegas probably no 15 years ago no so shit i was still in california 27 15 around california leaving to vegas yeah uh but anyway anywho uh back to tick tick boom (laughs) well also because we live so close to New York, I wish I paid more attention of some of these smaller things that happened. Like, did you know there was a Groundhog Day musical? I did not. And apparently it's pretty good. Like, I would love to see it. I, I would have loved to seen the, the Beetlejuice one, the King Kong one. Like, I want to see these movies adapted uh, to stage plays. Yeah, I have a hard time with that because while I do want to see that because I think it's, oh, what would this thing that I love be? be like if it was in musical form but at the same time it it seems like every thing on broadway is just doing the okay well we need a hit property that we know we'll put buttons mm-hmm. because opposed to like seeing original shit like i sure. i like seeing musicals where i don't know what's going to happen mm-hmm. i will say that one of the best theater experience i had was seeing monty python and the holy grail mm-hmm. the musical um that was a lot of fun but that was for a property that was you know 40 years old mm-hmm. or however old it is. Uh, and that's one of my favorite movies. But, you know, a lot of people's favorite movies is Beetlejuice, so they want to see the Beetlejuice yeah. musical. Uh, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we'll take a trip. We'll go see some shows in New York if you want. Yeah, I just got to see I wish up. they weren't as expensive as they are. But. Yeah, yeah. So, anything else on Tick Tick Boom you want to bring up? Uh, I never want to live in New York. No. Fuck that. Like, every movie I see that's in New York just... Like, I don't know. I get... You move to New York because there's lots of job opportunities and, like, that's where the hub of East uh, uh, East Coast art is, yeah. really. But it just seems like no one likes living there mm-hmm. and anyone who says they do is just pretending they do. Mm-hmm. And then if you... Every person I've met who's like, oh, yeah, I'm from New York is kind of, like, a dick. Yep. And because it's just like it's more like I'm proud that I'm from New York, or like oh I got family up there, and like yeah yeah it's a real good time. It's like I fucking hate when people mess with me though. It's just like it just seems like you have to like be kind of tough to survive. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily that you're like running away from stabbings every day. I don't think, but <laughs> it just seems like I don't. It just doesn't seem like an enjoyable place to live. You just no. do it out of necessity, or because you were just happy to be born there. I, or you want the clout of having that as your address. Like I live in New York. It. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm paying $3,000 a month for a two-bedroom apartment that is shittier than any place. That I'm sharing with multiple people. That I'm sharing with multiple people. Rats everywhere. While I'm working at some no, shitty diner. No washer and dryer inside your unit. It's like that's one of the main things. Of, oh, I may have to live 15 stories up in a walk-up. And I don't have a washer and dryer. Mm-hmm. I need to have a washer and dryer at all times. What if I just shit all over my bed for no reason? I need that washer and dryer in my building. <laughs> I'm not taking my shitty bed sheets down the street. Yeah, when uh, him and his friend who had AIDS is talking about, you know, living in New York. And he's like, oh, I'm so tired of, like, walking 12 blocks to go to the laundromat and stuff. It's like with a 30-pound bag of clothes and then walking up six flights of stairs. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my God. Like, that's... Yeah. I mean, I lived in Philadelphia for uh, nine months, and luckily everything was, like, in my building because it was student housing. But mm-hmm. at the same time, just, I still had to, like, walk places. And, you know, if I moved, I had to, like, load up in a car and do, like, 15 trips back mm-hmm. to my one apartment to the new one. And, yeah, it just... City living is not... For me. Unless you're super, super rich. Unless I'm super, super rich, which I'm not. No. So, yeah. Uh, yeah I, fuck New York. Fuck New York. I will go visit, but I will not stay very long. Nah. Pass. Yeah. And plus, like, I can't imagine, like, having a car and going, oh, I'm six blocks away. It's going to take me 45 minutes to get there. Mm-hmm. Just because traffic's so yep. bad or whatever. It's like, oh, you got public transportation, but it's unreliable and subways flood and... If you take a bus, that's still traffic. It's just 
too too congested let the let the ocean take it back <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think we need to find some uh i mean i guess like no matter what if you make something popular somewhere it's just gonna get filled with shitty people who want to see the popular thing and yeah then it's like I was gonna say we need to make some cool shit out in Wyoming or something like yeah, that. Yeah, let's find a really low population. I think it was North Dakota. Even their biggest city doesn't even have a million people in it. Like in order to be considered a city, you have to have a million people. Mm. And there is not even not even a city in North Dakota. Just a bunch of small towns or large towns, I should no. say. Uh, anything else? Uh. No, I, I don't think so. I, you know, we it, uh, it's not like it's the most uh, dense movie. It's pretty yeah. much all on the surface. Uh, yeah. Good songs. Good songs. Andrew Garfield putting in another fantastic performance. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's ever had a bad one. Yeah, um, that's true. That I can think of. Did you? I see mean, that? I guess you could argue Spider Man, but I actually liked him as Spider Man. Yeah, no, he's a good Spider Man. Um, uh, did you see the one where he's a clone? Like they're all clones in an orphanage. Oh, never let me go. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah, I like that yeah, movie. That was a good movie. Yeah. I didn't know they were. it was a clone story until, like, there was a part and I was like, I, they were talking about, I don't even, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I was like, is this a movie about clones? And then I was like, oh, shit, it is about clones. Yeah, and it's and like, oh, if you... That was the first time I ever actually saw him in a movie, and I was like, yes. damn, this kid is good. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I remember him getting out of the car and, like, screaming scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn, this kid can act. And then... Yeah. Next good stuff. couple years later, he's, he's Spider-Man. He's Spider-Man. I was looking at his IMDb, and it's like, what did I know him from before Spider-Man? And it really was just that. He, mm-hmm. he had a whole bunch of other smaller parts. But I really wish he had been popular in his, like, 16 to 21 age where he could do, like, American boner comedies, you know? <laughs> it, it, it's like he has the crush on the girl next door, but she doesn't want anything to do with him. And yeah. it's like I think he's perfect for that sort of like handsome enough to be a leading man, but still dorky enough to be the school dork. And and I wish we got to see him in wacky hijinks of stealing panties or whatever the hell it is people do. Yeah, because he seems like a pretty funny guy. I mean, I think he he's, he his wheelhouse is drama, but I'd like to see him do a, a silly comedy like put him in a wedding crash or something yeah um, not necessarily as a lead like but just in something like yeah. that or like sex drive can't you see him in the lead of sex drive that'd, that'd be great i like sex drive yeah me too uh, well anything I keep, uh, I keep saying anything and you keep bringing up something so yeah i i, I yeah it's pretty much right uh Good job, Lin Manuel. I, yeah. I look forward to seeing what you do next, kid. <laughs> you got a uh, you got some got talent there. A bright future ahead of you gotta, yourself. You got a bright future, yeah. I'd like to see him tackle something non musically based. Cause, yeah. I mean, I know that's the thing he loves the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if it's like if he doesn't love horror and then he makes a horror movie, there's not going to be the passion there. Sure, it, it would be like, nice to see. It's like what what is what's a passion project of his that isn't in his yeah. Wheelhouse? It's like we saw. Uh, Jordan Peele do nothing but comedy for 20 years and then he made a hit Oscar winning horror movie yeah. essentially it's but like well, horror was always in yeah, his I, life I understand that I'm yeah. just saying like if yeah. there's something that he also loves outside mm-hmm. of musical theater I want to see him do that um, but if he just sticks in sticks with musical theater then that's sure. fine too because yeah. he's maybe, clearly good at it maybe he could be the guy that directs Wicked or something you know I'm pretty sure that's already in production and oh director, really director yeah oh. I forget Who's directing it? I want to say, uh, it's someone who's made other musicals. I, it doesn't matter, but I'm pretty sure uh, Ariana Grande and um, do you know who Cynthia Orvino is? Nope. Oh, they they've been cast as. <clears throat> is is it what's his name? Toby Hooper, the guy who did. Les oh, Mills. Tom Hooper? Tom Hooper. Uh, no, yeah. it's not Tom Hooper. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that guy's not going to do much of anything after Cats. Ugh. And it's like I like Les Mis. It has its problems, but but I like Les Mis in general, yeah. so I'm forgiving. I uh, like Les Mis, and I like the King Speech. Oh yeah, King Speech. That's right. And then I, God, watching Cats was. I don't even know how to describe the event of watching that movie. I I wish I watched it with you. Yeah, I watched it with two friends, and it was a great time because we were able to just like talk and rip on it the whole time. I don't know if I would be able to get through it with a first watch 
on my own, actually paying attention to every on single thing. On my th- own, <laughs> pretending he's beside me. All right, we, we, we can't afford these songs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if I watched it by myself, I probably would have turned it off real quick. Yeah. Uh, but as a, as a watch with friends, it's a great time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yep, great directing. Andrew Garfield, fantastic. Uh, definitely my pick for... Best actor in leading role as of right now. Okay. Um, we'll see what happens when nominations come out, you know, two months from now. Uh, enjoyable songs. I didn't know anything about this musical or who Jonathan Larson was, but I, you know, I liked pretty much everything about it. Very, very little complaints. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, well, I agree as well. And I know I mentioned her before, but there's a woman named Lindsay Ellis on youtube she does a whole video on rent it's pretty good and how much she dislikes it she or? yeah she doesn't like rent um but she kind of was in that movie theater or uh, movie theater um musical theater groups mm-hmm. in high school and college and stuff like that so she was always around people who were obsessed with rent and she couldn't quite understand it and she really breaks it down of why it's not so good compared to other uh, plays that are very similar. Uh, she always has great video essays about anything. I mean, she has one about uh, called like My Monster Boyfriend, and it's it's all about like Shape of Water and why mm. are women attracted to these beastly things like Beauty and the Beast and all these other other things. And it it's a good good watch. She's very smart. Well, I guess that's it. So Steve, why don't you take it away? Tell them where they can find us. All right. So you can find us if. Let me take that again. (laughs) See? Saying things is hard. If you want to send us uh, a question or want to hear us talk about something on the podcast, send us an email at wrplpodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter at wrpl... at, sorry, at wrplpodcast. Uh, I'm Steve. I'm Ben. And this is the first time I went first. (laughs) And the last... Thanks, everyone, again. Goodbye. I'm Steve. Can I get the last word in? Better watch Munchies first so I can understand this deep Munchie lore.